everybody. Come on, I said praise the Lord, everybody. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The, hung, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, church. Did anybody come to praise Jesus this morning? <laughs> yeah, I saw some of you. I saw some of you. It's good to see you. I know... Uh, you're excited to see my bald and shiny head today, too. So <laughs> it's good. God is good. And I just wanted to thank you all for uh, your continued support to me and the ministry um, as, we, uh, <clears throat> as we serve uh, this generation and try to usher in a move of God where uh, the church has no walls. Amen. We're believing God for great things. Uh, I was on a, obviously, we got done with training camp. Had an opportunity to come home for our Elevate International board meetings. And my board is here this morning supporting me. Thank you all. And, uh, of course, to our, our leadership here at Church for the Nations, Pastor Mike and Pastor Mary. We have great leaders. Amen. We have great leaders. We love them. And, obviously, in their absence, we, uh, we pray that they have just be used mightily and refreshed greatly. So um, I'm excited to preach the word of God this morning. Thank you to uh, everybody who's just been you know, shouting, shouting me out this week, saying we can't wait to see you, and it's just, it's got me kind of excited. So I hope you brought your Bible. If you didn't bring your Bible, I hope you got your iPad or your iPhone or your Cricket phone or your prepaid phone. Prepaid phones don't have a Bible on it. <laughs> I want you to turn with me in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20. As we turn there... Um, <clears throat> I don't want you to tune me out this morning because um, of a very familiar passage of Scripture. Um, I want those of you who probably have heard it preached, we've probably and shouted it, and you've heard it in, in church, and people have shouted and praised, or maybe you, you uh, read about it in Sunday school, whatever the case may be. This morning, I want to lift up Second Chronicles chapter 20 and... Uh, I'm going to be preaching from a title called You're Covered. You're covered. You are covered. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at somebody real quick this morning because you guys are going to get familiar with your neighbor. Uh, if you haven't already, throwing a praise the Lord fist in their, hand, in their face or anything like that. <laughs> I want you to uh, look at your neighbor, shake their hand. If, it's, uh, if you're sitting next to your boo, you can get close in their face as long as you brush your teeth. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> and I want you to say, neighbor. Uh-oh. Y'all forget. We got to get our preacher voice on this morning. I said, neighbor. <laughs> say, oh, neighbor. I want you to know something. You're covered. All right, look at somebody else and say, neighbor. Come on, shake their hand, though. You got to shake their hand. Shake the hand, shake the hand like you're about to shake it off. Look at them, look at them like they stole your lunch money. They stole your lunch money before, after church. You know, that'd be, that would be a tragedy. This is a major crisis in life if you can't go eat after church. Look at them like that. Like they're about to make you go hungry after church. <laughs> look at them and say, neighbor. Come on, get your Southern Baptist. I'm talking about down in Louisiana, like. Country, preacher voice, I'll say, neighbor, <laughs> say, oh, neighbor, so I want you to know something, you are covered. Now, I'm, I'm going to have you do something prophetically and uh, spiritual aerobics this morning. I want you to get your arm out like this, get your arm out like this, and I want you to say this, say, I'm covered. Now, keep your arm out. Now, this time, we're going to say, I'm, and when we say covered, you're going to go like this. I'm covered. Ready? I'm covered. Okay, one more time. Ooh, y'all look good. Let's do, it, let's, let's do it the same way, though. It'd be like the wave. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try the wave real quick. Just, I know, I, I'm, I'm running out of time. This is taking up my preaching time. But ready? The wave, it goes, and then as soon as this section gets done, you guys do it, it's going to go like that. Ready? Covered. I'm uh, <laughs> all right, let's try it again one more time. Y'all ready? I, I kind of feel at home. Here we go. I'm. 
Uh, the way, okay, right, right in here, this section's a little slow. Need it all to get with the pace, all right? So it's like cover, and the wave's hitting, and then the wave kind of turns into a little. All right, here we go. Ready? I'm. Now, this section, this section is the only section that's making noise. You know, I'm covered. Wah! All right, here we go. Little, little, let's, let's shift it from second gear to, like, third gear this time. Ready? Here we go. I'm. Yeah, yeah, all right. Give yourselves a hand. I'm covered. I'm covered. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's life, it's strength. It literally ministers to the very core of our being. We pray that the incorruptible seed of the word of God would fall upon the good ground called our hearts. May it take deep root in us, sprout up and bear much fruit in our lives, and we give your name all the glory. We pray, Jesus, that you would allow us an opportunity to see you high and lifted up in this, set, in this sanctuary through the preach word. Even now, God, use me for your glory. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say amen. 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 <clears throat> amen. Jehoshaphat uh, is arriving at a point in his life as the nation's leader. Second Chronicles, we arrive at this place where King Jehoshaphat is the king of the southern kingdom. At this point, Israel is divided into two kingdoms, a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom called Judah. Judah means praise. Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah, a king of a nation called praise. He's the king of a nation called praise, and the nation called praise is arrived at a moment in their life where they face great, great crisis. And we pick up right here, and the Bible tells us in, in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Y'all go there with me, and I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, and it happened after this that the people of Moab and the people of Amnon and others with them besides them, Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea. Everybody say, a great multitude. From Syria and... <clears throat> From Syria, and they are in Hezazon, Tamar, which is in Gedi. Verse 3. <clears throat> My Bible keeps on flipping here. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, and from all the cities of the Lord, Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God our fathers, of our fathers, are you not the God in heaven, and do you not rule over all the kingdoms and nations in your hand? Is there no power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, verse 7, who drove out the inhabitants of, of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? Go on to verse 10. And now, here are the people of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir who you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Going down a little bit, and, and it says, verse 17, this is God's response to him. He has a response, and we'll walk through this in a moment. But he says, verse 17, you will not need to fight this battle. Position yourselves. I, I got three people awake this morning. The rest, 1,023 of y'all stayed up too late last night. You will not need to fight this battle. Position yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear Mufasa. Ooh. And they Harlem shake. <laughs> do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not. Do not fear. Don't be dismayed. Tomorrow. Everybody say tomorrow. Tomorrow. Go out against them. For the Lord is with you. I want you to look at somebody one more time and just look at them one more time good and just say you're covered. 
you're covered, you're covered, you're covered, you're covered. The Apostle Paul writes in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6, the Bible says in, cha- in verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are, are, are not carnal, they're not fleshly, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. He, he, he talks about that we're, we're to take every thought captive under the obedience of Christ and punish it so that it, it, we nail it up against the cross so that it, everything that comes across the battle of our life is under the subjection of the word of God. How many of y'all believe we serve a big God? We serve a big God and he's got, and he's got great plans and he's, he's got a great carved out future and hope and expected end for you. There's, there's things in the heart of God that he can't wait to see come to pass in your life. God is a great investor. In the market of the kingdom of your life, he has invested like a stock, a stock broker in, in the New York st- Stock Exchange. He is watching to see that the investment of your life comes to pass. God, with great expectation, is looking to see that your life measure up and be the witness that God has called it to be. Jehoshaphat comes to this place. He's in a big battle. The nation's in, the, in a crisis. Can, can you imagine? It would be like this. Three armies, three different countries, three different lands have gathered together. Mount Seir, and the, 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 the tribe of Amnon, and the tribe of the, of the Moabites. They've all gathered together. The Bible says the multitudes, they gathered together. It would be like 50 world countries, all with missiles pointed right towards America right now. Can you imagine the news conference, the press release? The CNN breaking news as, Obama, as President Obama comes to the podium and announces to the American people that, that every country, almost every country in the world has, has now taken up uh, an alt or beef against the United States and they're all set to destroy us. Can you imagine the amount of fear, the amount of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of deception and, and the, the roar that comes across the nation to grip and to cripple the people in fear. Jehoshaphat is in this moment, and Jehoshaphat is a man of God. He's a man of God who's, who's a righteous king, who leads a nation called praise. He has just went through his situation in a circumstance where he's, he's, he's fallen away a little bit, but he set his heart back on God. He got back up. The Bible says a righteous man falls down seven times, but the fact that he fell down, it, 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 it doesn't, the righteousness is, is, is in the fact that he rises again. It says he fell seven times, but he got back up. Jehoshaphat got back up. He's faced with this crisis in the nation that he's leading, a nation called praise. And, 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 and praise is in a moment of crisis. Now, when we're in crisis, uh, where do we turn to? When your car breaks down, you go to a mechanic. When, when you need your, your, your clothes hemmed up, you go to a tailor. If you have a cough, you go to a doctor. If, you know, you need some math help, you go to a tutor. But where do you go when your life is falling apart? Where where do you go when that thing that is so much bigger than you, that has been subsiding for years and generations through bloodlines and through moments and circumstances of your life and you've set your heart on Jesus and you've set your heart on God but that thing continues that crisis continues and it seems like the more you see God the greater the crisis becomes Jehoshaphat is in this moment and in verse 10 he says that he says something very amazing he says God isn't it isn't it this tribe these three tribes that you already could have dealt with in Israel when they came out of Egypt what he says is that he reminds God there was a moment in, when the children of Israel were coming out of Israel, or out of Egypt, that they could have dealt with each tribe individually. Now stay with me because this is very powerful if you let it sit in your heart. They could have dealt with Moab out of the conquest of Egypt. After, they could have handled Moab alone. They could have dealt with them. They could have handled them. The, that it in their life would have been handled they could have dealt with Am- the Ammonites, the Amorites. They could have dealt with that nation of Amnon. They could have dealt with them people alone. 
But God, and, and, and Mount Seir, the Bible says in Deuteronomy that each one of those they had an opportunity to deal with. But listen, God told them not to. God told them instead of dealing with it, here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to, ha- to, to kill this thing off yet. because I, And instead, I want you to go dine with them. Listen. He says, instead of being delivered from their hands, I want you to sit down and dine with them. Now, Jehoshaphat comes up against those three that they could have handled in the past. But because they were being obedient to the word of the Lord, now the stage is being set. And there's a great crisis facing Judah. But the stage is being set for God to show up in in ways that... And in a a praise and in a victory that never could have been scripted had they dealt with them individually. So listen, here's the application. Some of you have been dealing with things over and over and over in your life. Maybe it's a wayward child. Maybe it's a struggle in your life. Maybe it's something in generations that have passed down and you keep on seeing it subside and, 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 and remain in your bloodline. But listen, sometimes God allows us to, to grow up with things and for things to grow up with us because he's setting the stage for a greater and more monumental victory in your life. And so Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat is set set in this moment where something that could have been defeated has now united together against him. He's in a major crisis. He's in a shack-sized big crisis. It's a big crisis big crisis. And in order to deal with a big shack-sized crisis, you got to get in some big shack-sized shoes. And so here's what he does. Instead of, instead of, I think it's, I think it's amazing to, to note that instead of, the Bible says, instead of him getting into fear and completely, he has the emotion of fear. It hits him, right? And he, Mufasa, woo, right? He, he gets, he, he's afraid. But instead of allowing that fear to grip him, The Bible says, metaphorically speaking, and I've shared this before here, that the metaphor for the enemy, the deceiver of all of of God's people, the the one who is the father of lies, he is he is as a roaring lion. This is the enemy's strategy. He roars, he roars, and when he roars, roar out against you, that there's a there's a fear that is released, and you're gripped by the roar. It's not the best, best hunter, the best fighter. Or any of those things, but his roar is great. And this is what the Bible likens the enemy to, that he's a great roar. He roars and says, you're never going to be healed. Roar. Your kid's never going to come to Jesus. Roar. You're never going to get your financial breakthrough. Roar. All the dreams and gifts and talents that have been subsiding and laying down dormant in your life, that's never going to come to pass. Roar. All, you're, all, all you are is, is, is someone who keeps on failing with every opportunity that opens up. Roar. And roars try to get you into a place of fear. Fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Fear, false evidence appearing real. And what, what Jehoshaphat does, instead of allowing his fear to grip him and allowing his emotions to take control, because you can't ever allow your feelings to set in judgment over your faith. And so, and so when your emotions are set in judgment over your faith, it co- will cause you to miss out on opportunities that God has carved out for you to step into. It will cause you to miss out on, on hearing from God, on communing with God, on seeing the deliverance and the salvation of God. You cannot let your feelings rule over your faith. And so Jehoshaphat, instead of allowing fear to grip him, what he does is, he, yes, he fears. It's real. Amen? The crisis is real. The struggle's real. That's what the young people say. The struggle's real. <laughs> the struggle's real. It's real. But at the end of the day, listen, at the end of the day, is your focus on your crisis and how big your crisis is? Or is your focus on your God and how big your God is? So Jehoshaphat doesn't allow fear to grip him. Instead, what he does, the Bible says, he sets in his heart to seek the Lord. He set himself to seek the Lord. Now, now in this moment, instead of allowing prayer to just be his last resort, he, he, he allows prayer to be his first resource. 
How many of us get stuck in situations and we find ourselves in circumstances in our life where we're, we're, we're faced with a trial, we're faced with a major crisis. There's a crisis taking place in our life and, and it dawns on you somewhere in the, in, the, in the bottom of the pit of the crisis, oh, I haven't even prayed about this. Might be a good idea. You might want to pray about it and see what the Lord has to say about it. But prayer isn't always our first resort. It is very human of us and very natural of us to instead of praying and getting to our knees and getting into a, a, a position and a posture of prayer to try to fix stuff with our own hands. But there are some things that God will allow to a multitude to unite against you so that you get in situations and circumstances where you cannot fix it with your hands. This situation that you're in, it's bigger than human hands. It's going to take, a, it's a God-sized problem, and so it's going to take a God-sized victory. I wish the church would say amen up in here, up in here. I answered somebody's question that they came in here asking this morning. Well, why is it that this situation has grown up with me? Why is it this situation has continued to subside? And why is it that this crisis is continuing in my life? It's because God is setting the stage for a great victory in your life, baby girl. God is setting the stage for a great breakthrough, a manifestation of his work, a manifestation of his mighty power, a manifestation of his mighty acts that nobody can get the glory but God himself. So he allows us to go through circumstances and face crises, struggles and fights and problems, and people getting on our nerves. And <laughs> oh, man, somebody's getting on somebody's nerves up in here. That's the best. That was the best response I got all day. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's right, Pastor, preach. Well, we can go home now. We can go. <laughs> But God allows those things in our life. Amen, church? I mean, just, just real. And, and, and I want to talk to you. It, it, he allows these things in our life so that through the circumstances of our life, he can set the stage for a great, great victory. I believe that that's an answer for someone this morning. I believe that that is prophetically a proclamation for one of you this morning, five of you this morning, maybe six of you this morning, that it, 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 it's making sense. Maybe I shouldn't be waverly in my faith. Maybe I should get my eyes off my situation and back onto my God. Maybe I should think and consider praying and seeking the Lord about this situation instead of griping about it, complaining about it, pointing my finger, throwing stones, trying to, get, trying to find any reason that I possibly can to nail somebody to this thing so that I can, I can, I can blame shift and I can actually have a peace of mind that this, this is why this situation is working and it's still sitting in my life. God is setting the stage. Look at somebody and say, God's setting the stage. He's setting the stage. He's setting the stage. He calls, he, he goes into a place of prayer. And then the Bible says he does not only pray himself, he calls for the prayer warriors. There's a great power. I don't have time to deal with this. But there is a great power when, you, when, when, when God's people get together in prayer. <clears throat> now, he doesn't, just call, he doesn't just call a prayer meeting. He doesn't just call a prayer meeting. They go around with their prayer requests. And really all, a lot of prayer requests in church, they just turn into gossip sessions. Because, oh, we need to pray for such and such. Because he's da 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 like, That's really just your issue. You need to get that off your chest. <laughs> you really want to pray about it or you just need to gossip real quick. He's, he calls the prayer warriors. You, got, you have to. And if you want to be successful in this call and in this, and, in, and in this walk with God, you have got to have some people around your life that are a phone call away, that are as soon as you say pray, they're going to hit their knees. And listen, baby girl, they're going to go straight to the throne room of God and get into the holy place. You have to have some people that surround your life that can get into the holy place and get the attention of God right now, quick, fast, and in a hurry. You have to have that in your life. There's power when God's people pray. He doesn't just call a, a prayer meeting. He calls a fast. He calls a corporate fast. And, and, and as they corporately fast together, now fasting, just, just, just quickly, I know you guys, are, we're all taught well at this church, and, and, and you all are spiritual people, and matter of fact, we might as well just preach for the rest of the day, Dr. McCray, and we'll just let everybody fast, and we'll see what God does. <laughs> but fasting is, is a spiritual discipline and a spiritual weapon that the church, 
I believe, doesn't call on enough. Now, now, as leaders, um, as ministry, you know, people that do this full time, I, I, I think that we do a decent job of having to fast and pray because having to do with, you know, people, sheep, praise the Lord. You got a lot of stuff you got to pray about. So <laughs> you get a lot of issues, got a lot of situations. So we fast. But I think, listen, this from the front of, from this altar to the very back row of the church, if you're in the body of believers, fasting should be a part of your lifestyle. Look at me. Give me your attention because I, 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 I need the church to be attentive to what God is saying this morning. You cannot receive the deep things of God in your life and carry the Ark of the Covenant in a casual way. You cannot carry the presence of God, be a, be a, be a, be a, a, a Christ repper, a, a God bearer, an image bearer of the Lord, and you're walking in any kind of way in your life. Fasting is such a powerful discipline. It, it, it allows us to get into a holy place. It allows our flesh to be suppressed into a place. This is the image that I, that I, that I like to teach when it comes to fasting. It's like a dog who you're trying to train. A dog who, whose, whose body is completely obedient, runs his mouth, all he does is stick his tongue out, he wants water, then he wants to eat, then he wants to sleep, then he wants to eat again, and then you're trying to train him. When they train dogs, the first thing they do is muzzle their mouth. If you send your dog to obedience training, he's going to get his mouth muzzled. He's going to get his mouth muzzled because, because if you can train the mouth, you can train the body. And it's a powerful spiritual discipline to be able to, to, to say, I, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna turn over my plate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna skip a few meals because I need God to move in this situation. Or I need God, I need to hear God in this situation. Because a lot of times it's not the fact that the Lord isn't moving, it's the fact that you've moved somewhere. And, and, and fasting will get us back in alignment with God. And so it's a powerful tool, church. And I pray that you would take that and you would, you would just let God speak to you this morning about, about allowing that to be one of the weapons in your tool belt that you use to fight in, in this battle uh, as, you, as you walk out your pl the plan and the thoughts and the intentions and the destiny that God has written for your life. He proclaims a fast. They fast. They unite in prayer. And after they fast and unite in prayer, here's what happens. God sends a word. <clears throat> Many of us are looking for a word before we've set our hearts to pray. When you set your heart to pray, everybody say pray. So he prays. He sets his heart to pray, and then a word from the Lord comes. And the word from the Lord comes, and as, 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 as the word of the Lord comes, now he's got a word to stand on. So he's able to not just pray, now he can proclaim. He prays. He seeks God, and the word of the Lord comes, and now he has a word to be able to proclaim according to his situation. <clears throat> the word of the Lord, it, look, look at it. You can see it right here. It says uh, in, in verse 13, it says, um, let's, 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 I, don't, I told the first service, I'm like, I don't apologize for, preaching, for reading Bible and reading the scriptures in church. Amen? So let's read this. Now, all Judah with their little ones, their wives, their children stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, the Levite, of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all of you of Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, here it is again, nor dismayed, because of this great multitude or this great crisis that is arising against you, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Go down tomorrow against them. This is the word of the Lord that came after their prayer. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Listen, here's what's happening. God is letting them, as they pray and they set their heart in prayer, the word of the Lord comes, and he gives them a sneak preview, a little, a little insight to the game plan of the enemy. And here's what he says. He says, go down and position yourself. Make your, make your, get, get your life in a position 
to be able to receive the blessing when it comes. You, oh, I, I just, I, I ain't never going to get married. I can't, you know, start positioning yourself to get out of a single lifestyle and a single way of thinking. And as you position yourself, I believe you'll be in, in position to be able to receive the blessing. It's, it's about the sanctification process. As God leads us and he guides us, as he molds our heart, Ezekiel chapter 36 says that God gives, as a part of the new covenant, a new heart, a, a, a new spirit within us, a heart that beats, that pants for God, a heart that is able to be molded and shaped and formed by the, by the handiwork of an almighty creator who, whose hands are without any kind of flaw, and he molds and shapes our hearts as we walk with him, and he leads us and guides us into all truth for his name's sake. He's shaping our life. He's working something out. We are in position as we walk with God, and we obey his word, and he puts us in a moment of opportunity. Because when you've been prepared, and now you have an opportunity, when preparation and opportunity meet, that's an opportunity for, that is, that is the moment when destiny can wildly spring forth out of your life. Listen, when you've been prepared and you come to Kairos moments in your life, a chi- there's, two, there's two words for time. Y'all, y'all with me still? Okay. Yeah, there's two words for time in the, in the, in the, Bible, in the Bible. They're used for the, uh, of two words for uh, time in the Greek. And one is chronos, which is obviously like the date, the time. It's the calculated time. As we, you know, it's, the time is clicking right now. That's chronos time. But then there's another word called kairos for time in the Greek. And a kairos time is is a moment in time. It is a moment that God, listen, has carved out, set. It's a set time. A moment that God has carved out, a window of opportunity open for your life. And listen, Kairos moments aren't guaranteed that they're going to come back around again. That's why it is so crucial that as we walk in preparation... And we let God lead us. Even when it looks like multitudes are standing against us, we have to trust the fact that God is working for us. And if he's fighting for us, who can be against us? If there's things that are standing against us, if if God is on our side, he's greater than the entire multitude against us. Let somebody say amen right there. Because it's it's exciting to know that we we are being shepherded. We are being led by a God who's got the big picture in mind. So we trust the big picture, and as we trust the big picture in preparation, we come to moments of obedience in the word, and he carves out moments in time, opportunities, kairos moments that can wildly release destiny when your preparation and your opportunity meet together. He says, he says, after that, now the word of the Lord came, and God told them that where their, where their enemy was and that they would not have to fight the enemy. They were to position themselves. I need you all to say that one more time just for my soul so I can move on. Say position yourself. Position yourself not for the battle. Listen, not for the battle. Not to fight with your fists and your your spears and your, your words and all this other stuff. He says don't position yourself for the battle, but position yourself for observation. All I want you to do is stand there. Get in the right place. See, oh my goodness, this is, this is for somebody because the Lord won't let me move on. Some of us are so frustrated with the, with, with, with the fight and the, it was like, oh, we, we don't see any victory because, because we're constantly stuck in, in the wrong place. If you would just get into the right place, you would be able to rest a little bit and stand there and see the salvation of the Lord. 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 Not fight for the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Position yourself to uh, to observe. Stand still. Uh, Because I want you to watch what I'm getting ready to do. Just, just, Just watch what I'm getting ready to do. And the way we stand, just a real practical minute here. The way we stand in the word and and when we stand in battle 
is we, we have a word from the Lord, okay? So now we get the word, we pray, we seek God, we, we have a word from the Lord. Now we have an opportunity to proclaim the word. Everybody say proclaim. So he, he, he seeks the Lord, he, he prays, and, 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 and while he's in the battle, he prays, and then now he has a word, and he's got a word to proclaim. He proclaims the word of God. When you are standing in this battle and you have a word from the Lord, you have an opportunity to proclaim the word of God because the battle is not, uh, is not about flesh and blood. That's why I read that scripture at, at, at the beginning. The battle is for the ground of your heart. Let me take you a quick Bible study moment here. Y'all ready? The battle is for the, battle, the ground of your heart. And what the enemy wants to do is he wants to grab and grip and, and sink his teeth and his claws into the ground of your heart. So what he does in order to get to the ground of your heart, because he can't just go straight to your heart. So what, what he does, he's got to go through your soulish realm, and, which is your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. So he fights here in the soulish realm, in your mind. The battle is in your mind. Your mind will play tricks on you, man. Your mind will have you thinking a situation is completely different than what, it, than what it really is. And that's why we have the Word of God. And so the Word of God serves as an as, as a, as a anchor, as a root in, 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 in moments, when in crises, when we're, our faith is looking to be wavered. And so here's what we have. We have the proclamation of the Word of God. And I want you to see real quick that your mouth is like a gate. Battle here. For the ground here. But in between your head and your heart is your mouth. And so your mouth is like a gatekeeper. When you open up your mouth, it's like a gate. And it allows whatever's in your head to sink down in your heart. And so now we have, and it makes sense, right? When the Bible, when Paul writes, and he says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. You know what a stronghold is? It's a thought process, a memory, a fortified place inside your mind that is trying to take root and set up shop in your life. So we take those thoughts and we bring them under obedience of, 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 of the Lord. We, 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 we bring them captive under Christ. And so how do we do that? We speak the word. So the enemy comes. He says, you're never going to make it. You're never going to amount to nothing. You, your life, you're not blessed. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I, you're, you're, you, you've got a, a chaotic life and... and, and you stepped into this thing, and God, look, look at your life. Ever since you came to Jesus, ever since you came to, to Christ, you're, you're, it's been, you've been one step forward and five steps backwards. I believe that he is the good shepherd, and he leads his people in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. I stand in faith that Jesus is who he says he is. He's done what he said he would do, and he will perform his word in in my life. When you start doing that, everybody say, speak the word. When you start speaking the word, it takes those thoughts captive. That's the way you do it. It arrests those thoughts and brings them under the power and the authority of the word. So Jehoshaphat has a word from the Lord now. He's able to stand in that place, speak the word. Jesus, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the wilderness, Jesus is in the wilderness. He's led out into the wilderness. The Bible says that he's full of the spirit and he's full of the spirit. Listen, I'm going to just throw a little nugget real quick. It doesn't have anything to do with my sermon. I just want you to have it. He's full of the Spirit and led into the wilderness. That was only for the deep people, I guess. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, okay. He's full of the Spirit, led into the wilderness. And as he's in the wilderness, now the enemy comes and the enemy tempts him. And as he tempts him, the Bible says that he takes, if you, if, you, if you read the scripture in Matthew chapter 4, he takes, just a, he takes enough of the word of God and he twists it. Well, if God, if you're truly the son of God, then make these stones become bread. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And he comes back to him and says, well, you know, he leads him up to the mountain to cast yourself down off this. If you're, if you're truly the son of God, then... then you, he, hasn't he given you charge over his angels and things of that nature? And he says, Jesus says, it is written. It is written. But see, what, he, what the enemy misses is God didn't call, the Father didn't call Jesus the Son of God. Listen, listen. He doesn't call 
after his baptism, he doesn't get up out of the water and say, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. You know what he says? Come on, Bible readers. Jesus is baptized. He comes up out of the water. The heavens open up. The spirit of the Lord descends on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven comes saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. See what the enemy will do whenever you're in a crisis and when you're in a trial in your life, he will try to remove the beloved out of your life. That God calls you loved. He calls you his own. He calls... When you can be rooted and grounded in knowing that you are loved by an everlasting love, a love that never runs out, it never gives up, it never runs out. I mean, a love that is unfailing, the mercy of God, the unfailing love of God, the chesed in the, in the Hebrew, it is the love of God. That covers a multitude of sin. And God says about Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And anytime you're in a battle and you're in a trial, you have to know that no matter what it looks like, no matter how real the struggle's got, no matter how bad it's been, God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He's loved you with an everlasting love, and it's never going to run out. And Jehoshaphat is in a situation where, where he's got to proclaim the word. But then lastly, as I close this thing back, that, that close it out, he's got to praise. Everybody say praise. He's got to praise. If only we could realize the power, the awesome power of praise in our life. God is the one whom Israel praises for his saving acts. And, 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 and every time that God brought him out, he was, he, was, he, he was desiring to give him a praise. And so Jehoshaphat gets the word of the Lord and he says, go down. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to get the praisers ready. I want you to get the band ready. Come on, y'all. I want you to get the band ready. And I want you to get the singers set. Where y'all at? I need you to get the singers set. And I need you to, I need you to get the praisers ready. And here's, 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 listen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to send them out. And what I'm going to send them out to do is I'm going to send them out to say, bless is the, or praise the name of the Lord. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. His mercy, his everlasting love, his, his faithful covering of our life. I need, I, need, I need just four volunteers real quick. Come on, y'all four right here. All, all five y'all, why don't you do it right here? Come on, get up here. Hustle, hustle, use your muscle. We don't, we don't have a lot of time, but we're going to bring this thing on home. Now, here's what he says. According to Psalm chapter 5, y'all with me? Give me a few more minutes. Is that all right? Okay, I got I to gotta bring this thing home. Now, I want you guys to make a circle. Make a circle. Circle up. Now, um, here, sweetie. You stand in the middle. Okay. Psalm chapter 5 says this. And I pray this scripture so much over our ministry, over my family, over my destiny, over all the plans that God has for me. It says, for they that trust the Lord, God shall surround them. With favor like a shield. There's a shield of favor that covers your life as you trust God. Now, anytime anything tries to, you guys link up. You're the shield of favor. Anything that tries to come against that favor, if it doesn't align up with the favor, it can't be a part of the, the covering. Amen? It can't be a part of the, the surrounding. If it doesn't align up with your favor, God's not going to allow it. But the key to the verse there is that you trust in the Lord. And as you're trusting in God, you are sheltered and covered by favor. I need somebody to just do this. Say, I'm covered. Y'all sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. So here's what, here's what he says to him. He says, you're, you're, you're covered. You're, co you're covered. I, I, I got you. Just go out there. You won't even have to fight this battle. I got this thing under control, man. It's, it's all in my hands. I'm working it out. And so it reminds me of a scripture in Luke chapter 22. In the Bible, Jesus is speaking. It's in the red letters. This is good right here, y'all. Jesus says he's sitting down on the eve. Stay with me right here because 
I'm going to, this is like a crazy deep theological Bible lesson in like 1.3 minutes. And so watch this. God's sitting at the, at the table about to be betrayed, about to be handed over into the, Roman, the, the hands of the Roman citizen. Jesus is sitting there, and he's sitting with his disciples. And it's on the eve of the pass. It's on the eve of the pass. It's on the eve of the pass. And here's what he does. He says, Simon, Simon. He calls Peter by his old name because in a, there was a moment where Peter was getting ready to function in his flesh. And he says, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. He desires to take you and, 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 and sift you through the sieve of his, of his plot and his plan. And what he's going to try to do is separate you from the pack, separate you from your destiny, separate you from standing in the word of faith in your life. And and, and he he says, but don't worry, silence. Don't worry, Peter. He calls him Peter right here. I have prayed for. Watch this. So here's what he says. He says, I've prayed for you. On the eve of the Passover, Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, the, the Passover is instituted after the 10th plague where God's children had been being being beaten and, 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 and bondage and taken and just handled in a very evil and, and, and cruel way by Pharaoh. And God gets tired of his children being dealt like this. And so he says, all right, if you're not going to let my children go, if you're going to handle my children this way, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill off the firstborn of your children. And it's the 10th plague. But he tells the children of Israel, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go and get a lamb, a lamb without spot or wrinkle, a lamb without spot or blemish, and take a lamb, listen, for every house. Everybody say every house. Take a lamb for every house, and what I want you to do is I want you to kill the lamb, and then I want you to take the, the blood of the lamb, and I want you to sprinkle it on the doorposts of your home. And so when the death angel comes to, to take uh, the firstborn, he'll see the blood, and he will pass. He'll pass over. Because, because here's the situation. As Jesus is praying, what he says is, is I've, I've got you I've got you. Watch this. The eve of the Passover, celebrating the lamb for every house without spot or blemish. The lamb, the lamb of God without spot or blemish. The one and for only all time lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world is sitting there with his disciples and he says, don't worry about the trial. Don't worry about the crisis. Don't worry about the multitude coming against you, Peter. It may look like the odds are stacked against you, buddy, but listen to me. I have prayed for you. The enemy might design a game plan and he's got his, all, his, all his players in place and they're ready to execute this game plan, but don't be in fear and don't be dismayed. Even though you may fall, I've got you because I've prayed for you. You are. You are. You are covered, covered against every trial and tribulation that's designed to take you out. If it's not good for you, it's not going to take you out. If it's not good for you, God isn't going to allow it to your house because look, the problem doesn't recognize the house. Listen. The crisis doesn't recognize the house. The crisis recognizes the blood. So when he sees the blood, oh, that's one of God's pass. Oh, he's looking. I'm looking. I'm, I, I got to come against this circumstance in this situation. I've got to take this child out. I, the rebellion is, is, is looking like it's going to get so to the point to where they're going to be strung out on drugs and you're going to end up having a funeral. But, but it's one of God's. I've got to. I've got to pass over the marriage. It's looking dim. It's looking bleak. It looks like it's not going to work out. The relationship is in shambles. It's falling apart. But I get there and I'll see that he's one of God's. She's one of God's. I've got to. Jesus said, I've prayed for you. Rest assured that in every circumstance of your life, every crisis that you're facing, every crisis and trial that you will face, your home, your relationships, your children, your finances, your ministry, you are 
You're covered. You're, you're covered. You're covered. You're covered. Covered not by the words of man. Not by the heart of a passionate brother or sister. But covered by an almighty God. El Shaddai. Elohim. God who was and is and is to come. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and your buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at the noonday a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 by your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high God, your dwelling place. Church, you are. Jehoshaphat rises up to the moment. He says, here's what I want you to do. God tells him, I got you. You're covered. Position yourself. Stand there. I, I got this. All I want you to do is praise before the battle. Praise during the battle. And praise after the battle. Because I got you. Come on, one time. I got you. Here we go. Come on, one more time. I got you. One last time, just for the Holy Ghost. Here we go. I got you. Would you put your hands together and magnify the Lord with me? Come on, let's stand to our feet all over the sanctuary and bless the Most High God. Come on, give God something that you are. A kind of praise that says, God, thank you for covering me. God, thank you for keeping me. God, thank you for sheltering me. God, thank you for shielding me. Come on, church. Give him the kind of praise. <laughs> That is equivalent to the gratitude of your heart. Come on, come on just, just for a moment here. Just for a moment. Give it to him. Give it to him. You're covered. 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 I'm covered. I, I wish somebody just prophetically would do that over your children. Uh, they're they're Come on, y'all. Just prophetically say my children are. My wife is. My job is. My destiny is. My ministry is. Come on, somebody. My family is. You're covered, you're covered, you're covered, you're covered. And maybe somebody stands here today and you say, I'm outside of the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, I don't have a relationship with the Lord, young man, young lady. Uh, maybe you say, I have, I've strayed far away, sir, ma'am. You're outside of the covering of, of the almighty God. And today you're making it up in your mind to reposition yourself to get into that place where you are covered. I want the altar team to come quickly. And what we're going to do is I want, I want you just to come. If you need prayer this morning, prayer to say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm submitting myself back into your hands. I'm submitting myself back into the place where, where, where I want to be in the covering underneath the shadow of your wings underneath your covering. Come to the altar. Come on, come. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. And then those of you maybe say, I've got a, I've got a crisis in my life. 
a struggle, a crisis, a situation, a multitude is coming up against me, and I need somebody. I'm going to take action on this word, and I'm going to call for the prayer warriors, and I'm going to agree in prayer. I want you to come down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come, and we're going to pray. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. All